So the first thing um, that I want to talk about is tangent squared. All right, and here's the whole reason why we're going to be using these uh, these identities. Right, I gave you all those different identities, and what I want you guys to understand is there's not just one way to do it. All right, there's going to be a lot of different options you guys can look at. So, for instance, if I gave you a problem that has a tangent squared in there, there's really kind of three avenues that you guys can go ahead and work on. All right. Megan, is, what is one way I can transform tangent squared based on those identities that I had? How, what's one way I can rewrite tangent squared? Tangent times tangent. I could write it times tangent times tangent. That's actually not using one of my identities, but that actually works. Tangent of theta times tangent of theta. Now, based on the identities, that's a very good one, thank you. Based on the identities, is there another way I can rewrite tangent squared? Yes? One over cotangent squared. One over cotangent squared, right? That's one of those identities. 1 over cotangent squared of theta. What else is another way I could rewrite them? Anybody else wants to go ahead and give it a shot? Yes, Jamie. Sine over cosine. What kind of sine over cosine? Squares, right? All right, Josh, I'm going to give you the last one, so you got to think of it. Sine squared of theta over cosine squared of theta. There's one more, Josh. I know you can think about it. It's one of those Pythagorean identities. Think, did you write down those? What, remember, tangent is sine over cosine. Did you write that down? OK, so, sine, so tangent is sine over cosine. So if it's tangent squared, it could just be sine squared over cosine squared. Doesn't make sense? Well, you understand tangent sine over cosine, right? So if it was tangent squared, it'd be sine squared over cosine squared. If it's tangent to the fourth, that'd be sine to the fourth over cosine to the fourth. Right? Um, yes? Yeah, because remember the Pythagorean identity says 1 plus tangent squared, bless you, 1 plus tangent squared equals secant squared. So if I just subtract the 1 to the other side, I can also say tangent squared is going to equal secant squared of theta minus 1. All right. So what I want you guys to understand is you know, not always tangent. There's obviously a lot of ways, Grace, um, to be looking at this and saying, I can rewrite tangent in all these different ways. So which way is the best one? right? For a problem, which one should I use? Right? Because you're going to have a problem where there's going to be tangent squared. And guess what? You're going to have to decide which one, which how do you want to rewrite tangent. So Kristen, when you're looking at these, what the best thing I, I you know, tell students is there's not always a right answer. If Juliana chooses this way, and then Kobe chooses this way, all right, there's still going to be a way to work through it. But there's always a way that's going to make a, maybe a little bit more sense, or maybe use less, um, less, less kind of algebraic techniques to simplify your answer. All right? So um, what I make sure, guys, don't get caught in like a, a hole where you only think the only way to convert tangent is to rewrite it as sine over cosine. Or don't think the only way to rewrite tangent squared is going by secant squared minus 1. You can apply all of these. all right. But what we're going to do is, through practice, you'll see which ones per which problem are going to make the most amount of sense. All right. So let's, uh, let's get to an example where that would